that's enough of that. Well, that's Christmas and New Year all packed up and in storage. Yep, and here's your coffee. Oh, thanks. Hold on. Aren't we missing something? Sugar. Oh, sweetness, please. Uh, two. There you go. Thanks. Wait, that's not it. There's something else, Paul. Spoon? Oh, yes. And no. I got it. The solo trailer. Where is it? I think I've seen some Ewoks run off with it outside. Really? How many was there? Only the one. It was working solo. <laughs> Should we get after him? <laughs> I've just made the coffee. Yeah, you're right. Be ashamed to let a good brew go cold. And besides, the trailer will turn up soon, say on a Sunday. Anyway, go get biscuits and we'll start the show. Rich teas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Hi, from the forest moon of Endor, Radio Free Endor, Star Wars podcast, bringing you news and reviews from the galaxy far, far away. Welcome to episode 27 of Radio Free Endor. Christmas is over and done with, and the new year has started with a bang. Or the Death Star blowing up on the stroke of midnight, and the build-up to the new Han Solo film is about to start with the first trailer. But before that, we still need to talk about The Last Jedi, and the new so far, and I just can't do it on my own. So I sent the call out, and someone answered, no, it was not the Rebels, but it was me old mucker Paul. <laughs> Hello, JB, how are you doing? And not too bad, Paul. Here we are again, cool, cool, cool. start yeah. of the year. Yes, it's uh, it's that horrible time of year where it's like dark at four o'clock in the evening and light about nine o'clock in the morning. Yes, it's yeah, uh, it's SAD season, isn't it? Yeah, it season, is. Yeah, season is what's what's it called? Season effect just affected disorder, I guess. Isn't mm, it? Could be. <laughs> it's one of those things, isn't it, Paul? Where you go to work and it's dark, and you come back from work and it's dark. There's just yeah. never any light. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's all right for me because I'm out and about all the time, you know, fixing stuff, the old uh, falcon and bits and pieces. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm not> like... <laughs> Do you know what? I'll tell you what, though, Paul. Special, you know, what's special about uh, the January month for us is it's Radio Free Endor's birthday because we started <laughs> in January. Yes, yes, and we're uh, two years older and certainly feel it, yes. <laughs> yeah, so it's happy birthday to us, that's for sure. Now, um, what we've got coming up on today's show, listeners, is that we're going to be doing a bit of a, a Last Jedi in review, you could say, because we've not really talked about it, even though I was glued to my seat and Paul was fast <laughs> asleep. We yes. still try and get through it. So hopefully we'll, have a, we'll, we'll be getting some people on to talk about it. Don't know who, it'll be surprised because mm. they might not turn up. I mean... Yeah, yeah. But I tell you what, Paul, we'll shoot over to the news. Go for it. Right, straight off the ball, uh, I tweeted out an old, uh, well, basically uh, the fan club, the official Star Wars fan club membership card, which I got back in the seventies. No, sorry, the eighties, and it says Master Jamie Burns on it, which my auntie joined me up, and I loved it, and I and I got the Fanta tracks with it and everything like that. But I sat here the other day and I thought, mm, I'll redo that card. Because mm. nobody's got that card. So I redid it. And then I tweeted it to Mark Hamill. And Mark Hamill tweeted me back. Yeah. Which <laughs> I thought, I just, I couldn't believe it. It's tweet, <laughs> right? So basically, I'm going to read it to you. And I put, at Hamill himself, I remember my old fan club card, which I still have. So I redid the design. But my question is, did you ever get a fan club card back in the day? And Mark Hamill sent back... I don't want to belong to any club that will accept me as a member. As a member, Groucho Marx, he did, I remember, <laughs> I remember him saying that. And I put, uh, priceless, you've just made my day. And he liked that one as well. My God, he liked my tweet. <laughs> That's yeah. it. You've done what you needed to do. Time I'm to pack done. up the podcast. <laughs> Time to pack up. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm going to cut that out, Paul. I'm going to frame it. I'm going to yeah. frame that. That's, that was my big news. But, been shoulders but, with the with the with the, <laughs> with the elites. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, on other news, we've got um, some stuff about John Williams has come up. Um, now there's two bits here. 
Um, and, and the first bit that came out just on the end of December, which is John Williams is to compose the Han Solo theme music. Mm. Now, uh, John Powell um, is doing the, the, the writing, doing the whole score, but yeah. they're getting John Williams in to, uh, to just do that theme, and then I take it John Powell will work it in to bits and bobs around the film. So John Williams has written the scores for all eight Star Wars films. Yeah. Right, and uh, Michael Giacchino wrote the music for Rogue One. Now we mm. also Rogue One did have a good score, but it was slight. Yeah. It was missing something. Okay, missing something. But then um, on the tenth of January, John Williams is to score Episode Nine. Um, mm. So he's going to close out the Skywalker saga uh, with um, with J.J. Abrams on Episode Nine. And you know the guy's eighty five at the moment. Paul. Yeah. So he's yeah. getting on, isn't he? And now, and he goes. Uh, I would very much uh, like to complete uh, the saga, and adds that he has no plans to retire any time soon because he's just mm. done the the music for Spielberg's new film, The Post. And I'm not too sure what else he's doing, but um, it's great that he's going to finish the, the the Skywalker saga, finish it off, yeah, yeah, and it's done. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. That's good. What else have you got, then, Paul? Um, I, f- I found a, a quite a funny little article on Digital Spy earlier. Someone's actually made a men's activist cut of the Last Jedi. <laughs> really? Yeah, they've they've basically cut out all the female sections in it and made it into a forty-six minute chauvinist cut, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I take it they've done this cut on like a bootleg version of it because it's not. Yeah. Unless it's, they've got it, their hands on a screen, it's, it's been released on the on the, on the, on Pirate Bay by an anonymous user. But yeah, but he basically said that he doesn't want it. He's cut it so the woman aren't in it, so he doesn't have to feel sick. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> well, so, yeah. <laughs> some people, some people. Well, you know, uh, all the women characters in it are proper strong female characters. It is a very female driven. Yeah, the, the film, yeah, yeah, it is, it right. is. It's it's hard where to stand on this, isn't it, Paul? But because yeah. you know, you don't want to offend people. In but yeah. either way, you're going to offend people, aren't you? If well, you say, true. if yeah. I like it the way but, it is, but at least now, but at least now I can say you've had your turn. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, yeah. the original the, the original films were all male dominated, yeah. and well, these new trilogy are female dominated. Well, uh, well. Just, it's how it is. Mm. It's really, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, my biggest concern is with uh, Hollywood at the moment with this with this female lead. Is It's good that women are getting female leads, but mm. women have been getting female leads for a long time, as I can remember. Sig- Sigourney Weaver. I was going to say Sigourney yeah. Weaver was yeah. one of the yeah. leading ones, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it seems that whenever there's a film out uh, or it's coming up, they sort of go, let's take the males out and stick the females in. And sometimes it works, sometimes yeah. it doesn't. The Ghostbusters yeah, yeah. one did not work. No, yeah. Right, but did not work. For me, it was the comedy. It was so slapstick. It was so, like, you know, in your face, obvious. What the, what was, in the original film, it was a lot darker. Yeah. So so for me, it was, like, nah, just too cheesy. Yeah. Really and cheesy. It was, it was proper, a bit rude as well. Because it it's not a film that you could, you know, my... my my eight-year-old, when he watched it, he was like, he didn't what, like it. Yeah, yeah. He didn't like bit, it. Is it a bit, bit vulgar? Cut, it was. Say. It was. Yeah. It was very vulgar. Yeah, I mean, it's like, okay. I'm saying it's like Star Trek. I can't even let him watch Star Trek Discovery, the new one, because they swear. They've sworn in that. And it, but yeah. Star Trek's not about swearing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not about swearing. But, uh, you know, sticking in, let's just think of a, a, a female-dominated film that I've really enjoyed. I hate to say it. The Pitch Perfect films, that's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> I've oh, watched okay. them a couple of times. I see them on TV and go, oh, God, don't want to watch yeah. them. But when they're on, I go, God, that's such a good film. I know like that film. <laughs> you've got the girl, girl out of Stranger Things. Yeah, um, yeah. What else have you got? And she um, was absolutely brilliant to that. And you've got... Resident Evil. Resident Evil films, yeah. yeah. She's, and yeah. how many has she made of that? Is it you, there's, six? there's roles Something. out there. There's roles yeah, out there, yeah. and, and it's like with the Golden Globes that's just been on Paul. Oh, we're going to get a bit of politic politics here. <laughs> the Golden Globes, man, they were like apologising. It's all it's all from this Harvey Weinstein uh, yeah. thing that's coming out, and and I can understand that the that, that, that the females have had a massive backlash now because it's basically empowered them to come out and say what they've said and. Mm. Um, 
you know, it's it's a good thing because at the end of the day, what what happened was was totally wrong. So, yeah, it was, uh, and I do agree know, that I'd... they should get equal pay. Yeah, I mean that is yeah. they should yeah. get equal because they're doing the same job. The you know what I mean? Job, yeah. But um, it's, I'd, like, I'd like to get the equal pay. <laughs> yeah, I would like to get equal pay. Yeah, but it's like um, uh, the you know with Oprah Winfrey coming on and them saying, "Oh, we want you as president," and the she's going on. There was yeah. photos of her kissing Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, I mean, yeah. showed up talking about the Golden Globes. Ah, see, everything leads to the Golden Globes. Yeah, is Urien McGregor showed up at the Golden Globes last night and collected... Well, it wasn't last night, it was the other night. And collected the best actor in a limited series award for his dual role turn in the third season of FX's Fargo. I, do you know the Fargo? The first two seasons were eight. Mm. I've, not seen, I've not seen them at all, Fargo. What's it, what, what, is, what is it based on? Uh, it's based on the, the Conan Brothers film, Fargo, uh, but mm-hmm. the series has got nothing to do with the with the uh, the the series got nothing to do with the films, and each oh, okay. the first two seasons, the second season was a prequel <clears throat> to the first one. But I think this third season's got nothing to do with the previous seasons. It's mm-hmm. weird. But I watched a couple of episodes of this new season. It didn't grab me like the last two seasons no. did, so I didn't watch it. But it, you know what? He had a bit of a beard. Paul. He had a bit oh, of his beard, yeah. Okay. And during press, immediately after, someone asked him about the possibility of returning to the Star Wars franchise for the rumoured Obi Wan Kenobi spin off film. Congratulations for this, and we love all your work, especially Obi Wan Kenobi. I know that there's been a lot of talk of wanting you back, and you would be interested in it. What's the situation right now with that just that there's a lot of talk and I'd be happy to do, play him again but I, I don't know any more about it than you do there's no um, plan at the moment I love the new one I saw the new one just uh, over Christmas and I thought it was really really beautiful I loved it well what else is he going to say he's, gonna, he's not really well, going to go say it, yeah yeah yeah, yeah of course <laughs> I'm going to be in it I'm <laughs> just growing commit, this beard for fun None of thing. Star, Star Wars suicide yeah yeah right. exactly <laughs> If exactly. He, uh, admitted it. Yeah. It was suggested the film would be shooting in England's Pinewood studio starting January 2019 for, uh, for a late 2020 release, but I think mm. it might be sooner than that. So the truth. Yeah. You know I mean, but he's, he's um, training now. Him out. It's it's nice that it's being done at Pinewood. I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Pinewood's obviously like one, one of the one of the places to to do a film if you're in the UK. Definitely. Mm, it's very much so. Yeah. A lot of lot of stages there to use. So. Yeah. What, what have you got then, Paul? Um, the Star Wars franchise has now paid for itself, apparently. What? So, it's paid its tickets, yeah. has it? <laughs> two tickets to please Star Wars, yeah. please. Parking. It's uh, two for one if you have the old meerkat. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. I've got that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, f- five years ago, Walt Disney Pictures handed out $4.06 billion to buy a Lucasfilm. Uh, now with Star Wars The Last Jedi gross, uh, crossing the 934.2 million worldwide mark today, it's been revealed that the deal has effectively paid for itself. Uh, combined tickets of sales of Star Wars Last Jedi and Rogue One A Star Wars Story and Star Wars The Force Awakens have now surpassed the 4.06 billion mark covering oh. the cost of the acquisition. Um, of course that figure doesn't take into account exhibitor cuts and hundreds of millions spent to produce and market the film but it also doesn't include lucrative ancillary revenue streams, merchandising sales or theme park attractions so that that right there would be more than double that amount, I would imagine. You wow! Know, you, you know, you think you, you think you spend what twenty twenty UK pounds, thirty mm. UK thirty US dollars to to go and watch the film. Mm. You would spend more than that on on merchandise. Mm. Uh, yeah. So I can imagine it's near the ten billion. Yeah, mark, it, and it's a, not cheap. Global. You know, no. whenever I've got because every time I've gone into the Disney store and looked at the Star Wars stuff. In our particular Disney store here in Leeds, um, there's not much of it, but it's really expensive. It's like 25 quid for like little figures. I have to yeah. wait until they've been re- reduced to about a fiver so I can buy yeah. them. But they've, um, they've never got a large selection either. No, I mean, um, Lego's going the same way again, isn't it? That's mm. that's that's shot up in price. Um, God, yeah. So, yeah, it's... Yeah, there's an awful lot there out there in franchise that, um, that they can make from revenue from mm. um, from all the other sections of the of the company. So hmm. yeah, well, it's funny you should say that about my Lego though, Paul, because some 
just before the Lego bit, some artwork for the new solo film was leaked, right? Uh-huh. Now, um, the room, it was rumoured to be the fi- first artwork for solo Star Wars story. Um, mm. And it was released onto Reddit. And it, it looks accurate and it looks convincing. And it looks like to be a, a piece of time merchandise, like promo art, as to and opposed to uh, like a proper poster. The artwork shows off Aiden... Alden Einreich. Alden Einreich. <laughs> In character, yeah, Ian Reich, with a glimpse of Donald Glover as Lando and Chewbacca and Emily Clark in character, and the Millennium Falcon sporting some blue paint, and it looks kind of different. Right, that was it. There was an update in Disney and Lucasfilm tell slash film that this artwork was not created by them for the movie, and no, and and, and are not aware of its origins. So the source has been tracked to a licensing Russia website, which means the art could be created by a local film marketing utilizing f- official elements. Or it's the Russians it could be... again. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> CNN, get on that right now. Right? Um, it could be, uh, you know, those fake uh, toys you could get. That's yeah. immediately what I thought. Fake. Yeah. And Disney and Lucasfilm say it's not anything to do with them. And yeah. then, out of the blue come some leaked images of Lego sets with some familiar artwork. <laughs> Hold on. Isn't that the artwork that Disney just said wasn't done by them? On yeah. official Lego Disney boxes? That's bloody strange. Because it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so these images, I don't know if you can you see them, Paul? Yes, right? can, these, yeah. right. Now, we know that's his car because we've seen it on, on some... Uh, yeah, footage. That was footage, good. yeah. Yeah. He's Han Solo's land speeder with a Carillion hound and a woman called... It looks like... Uh, Kira? I don't know. I yeah, the image is a bit... Soon. Yeah, the image is a bit... Um, Small. Yeah. And and then the next one you got uh, another massive like a junk land speeder, and you've also got an imperial sp- a speeder pack or something. Now we've yeah. seen these on leaked photos, so we know they're real. Mm. And but these are official Lego kits. Now I've been looking over like Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, and some of the Lego YouTubers wanted. Yeah. I've been talking about these, but they weren't allowed to show the photos. They've been embargoed by. Disney. Yes, of course, yeah. Yep. Now, that's strange. Why would Mm -hmm. Disney embargo these images if they weren't real? So that means Mm. they were lying to us yet again. (laughs) This artwork wasn't. I bet they, I bet that person in that box says, no, it's not nothing to do with us. Hmm. Damn. (laughs) Oops. Oops. And then the big, of course, the biggest set you're going to get is the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon, which shows the pointy bit. Um, yeah. Instead like of the dim- diamond shape, is yeah, it on the top? That's there, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, instead of having its um, <sighs> normal, um, uh, mam- what do they call it a mamba ball um, look? You know, with the two points. Oh yeah, yeah. But you know, Han Solo has said I've made a lot of special modifications myself. And Lando did say, "What have you done to my ship? Your ship?" It's amazing what two throwaway yeah. lines can do <laughs> for marketing. You know what I mean, <laughs> somebody's gone. Damn, my God! There's a story right there. If anyone wants to see, if anyone wants to see the the kit, it's um, Lego number seven five two one two. Yeah. If they so, Google yeah. that, I bet you would have come up with these images. Well, yeah. Probably would actually. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and the other ones are seven five two one zero, seven five two zero seven, and seven five two zero nine. Mm. So th- there must be a kit between uh, seven five two zero yeah. seven. There should be a seven five two zero eight. Yeah, should, it should be an eight. Uh, it should be an no eight. Yes. And an eleven. An eleven. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I uh, might have to have a look. I'm going to have a look now. You carry on. <laughs> yeah, have a look. you have a look there, Paul. But in the meantime, as well, the official synopsis for the solo a Star Wars story was revealed today, Paul, offering new details on the upcoming film. Now, this yep. is this is what Disney have said. Board the Millennium Falcon and journey to a galaxy far, far away in Solo, a Star Wars story, an all-new adventure with the most beloved scoundrel in the galaxy. Though a series of daring escapes deep within a dark and dangerous criminal underworld, Han Solo meets his mighty future co-pilot, Chewbacca, 
and he encounters the notorious gambler Lando Calrissian in a journey that will set the course of one of the Star Wars saga's most unlikely heroes. Mm. Doesn't tell you much. Could have wrote that myself. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while not much else is known about the film, director Ron Howard has do- uh, documented his experience making Solo on Twitter and Instagram throughout the production with everything from set photos to his morning coffee. Uh, well, I've just sent you a link um, to the old trusty Skype. Yeah. Uh, th- on geek culture. You can probably add this into the show notes. Mm-hmm. You have a quick look at that and see what you can see. It's a leaked Lego Star Wars 28 releases. Oh. You've got buildable figures. You've even yeah. got some Han Solo stuff in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Micro fighters, yeah. yeah. 75208 is a great place at Yoda's home, 7 to 12 years. That was that one. <laughs> so the plot thickens on that then, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm. Yeah, that's right. But you, you you may as well add this link into the uh, show but notes. You're right, though, Paul. That is uh, 75208. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I wonder what um, seven five two e eleven is. No, ten. Seven five two ten is that um, is the one we've already seen. Yeah, so eleven. So got seven uh, is it eleven? Seven five two eleven. We'll have to find out. Yeah, no doubt it will all come on to. Um, it's all going to come out on uh, eventually on YouTube or Twitter or Reddit. Yeah. As that time it, goes it does. By. It does help people because maybe they want to grab it early before before yeah. a, a it goes up in price and b once it once it actually comes out of out of production then the skyrocket. Mm. Um, my daughter, she's into the uh, Lego elves. Oh yeah, and um, she wants one of the two of the ones that have been discontinued. You're looking at 150 quid for a small a small set, and it's like ridiculous. It is. It is. So, you uh, can understand why a lot of people go to that uh, looping. The, yeah. you know the looping sets and yeah. to be fair I bought one I bought that big uh, the, the Millennium Falcon one before yeah. the, the the redo the reboot version of it and uh, it's a great set and it only cost me what 120 quid it, compared yeah. to the thousands that people wanted for it but that's people money grabbing for you yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh that was it um, I, there was something that I did have uh, left over Paul which was when will you see the, the first solo Star Wars trailer. Now, we got a leak off the Daily Express a couple of days ago okay. saying it was going to be on Sunday. So we held off from doing the podcast because trailers yeah. out, we can do it. That's right. Nah, yeah. It's just not happened. So Daily <laughs> Express is becoming like the English version of CNN. Uh, it's full of <laughs> fake news. Right? But um, a friend of mine pointed me to a blog by uh, Manor Bites blog. Right? And he says... Mm. Uh, when do you think you're going to see the trailer? Now, he says, over the last couple of weeks, the internet has gone into trailer Nostradamus mode, trying to predict when the first trailer of Solo will be released. While some thought he'd see it before The Last Jedi, others have come up with completely bogus predictions uh, during a college football game or the, the NA- NFL wildcard games or even Good Morning America. Nah, it's not going to be on any of them. So this guy goes on and he says, this year, he thinks... Uh, the first trailer will be on uh, on a Sunday. That's I think always... it's going to be on the Super Bowl. A lot of people are saying Super Bowl. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And Because I, I actually said to... I posted up on um, Facebook, on a group, and I said, you know, which Sunday is it? And they've put... Yeah. He's saying either with the NFCC on Fox or during the Pro Bowl on ESPN right, following yeah, Sunday yeah. before the Super Bowl. They both owned by Fox... Owned now yeah, by yeah, Disney yeah. and ESPN yeah, is owned by so, Disney. Yeah. And, and you just get the ratings up, won't it? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And plus, it's bound to be in front of Black Panther, which is going to be released next month, I think. But they're calling it close because this solo is May. You know what I mean? Was there supposed to be some reshoots done? Yeah, Again, they, they were doing some. You? Yeah, they were doing some reshoots right now. Yeah, um, not the ones that were previously being done. These are more reshoots, aren't they? Yeah. More reshoots, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. They can't seem to get away from the reshoots. I'm wondering with the main character that's playing Han Solo. You know what they did with um, Men in Black Three? Yeah, Hal had the young. What was his name? The, the young uh, version of Bowling. Uh, 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 the, bo- yeah, yeah. There's a young version, but he he played the older character so Kay, well. Yeah. Like, you know, he, yeah. he had all the mannerisms. He and did. Else. He played him really well. 
he played them really well and sound, sounded. I, I don't know how they done the voice, but they must have dubbed it somehow. <laughs> yeah, witchcraft. But um, it'd be nice if the solo in this new film has got hands. You know the. The older Han Solo's mannerisms. He's managed to that. do it, yeah. He's managed if he's to managed to pull it, it off, yeah. Well, that, you got that, th- would, that would that would sell it because, I mean, I, I sit here thinking about this film and I'm thinking it's it just seems so far removed. Yeah, um, it's like it, 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 it's it's like a, it's just a to, it's a totally different entity. Mm. But if it but if he can pull that off, then that will drag it back it's in. True, I think. yeah. Or and, uh, they would stick cameos in it. Like there's been talk that um, that uh, there's going to be a cameo from a character from Rogue One. Um, you know, I can probably guarantee you C three PO and R two D two will be in it. So because oh, yeah, yeah. they've been in everything, right? And maybe even a Ewan McGregor might pop into it. Hmm. But um, they would they will shoot themselves in the foot if they don't stick Darth Vader in it because Darth Vader's around that time. Yeah. So yeah. it'd be nice for them to get you know get that in because I'd like to see a Darth Vader film where it goes on a hack and slash weekend. You know what I mean? That'd be quite popular. <laughs> weekend at Bernie's. Um, just one last thing before we, we nip off this news is um, I noticed that uh, Star Wars Battlefront has just got its first update of 2018. And just looking through it, Paul, the yeah. um, some bits like Aiden Vasio's TIE Fighter, which is 5,000 credits to unlock. I've not even heard that much, right? Yeah. And But um, the star cards and the hero alterations, they've sort of downgraded them all. From like your damage from a sixty five percent to a forty five percent, dead eye shot from a forty to a thirty, cooldowns from three point five to one point uh, to one point five. Well, that's probably better actually. Mm. Um, some rocket barrages damage is from ninety to seventy eight. Mind, mm. <laughs> and and there's some radius of rocket launches from two meters to one point five meters. It's like yeah. what? Yeah. It's just a downgrade. It's everything. It's so. so- so you reckon you're going to have to earn more credits to get stronger weapons again? Yeah, <laughs> proper grit. I'm back to square one. Well, I, yeah. you know, I, I got the game. I bought the game for proper knockdown price, Paul. It was like 25 mm. quid. I thought, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll have that. And um, uh, that just shows you how quick it's gone from a, from 50-odd quid yeah. to 25 quid. So I bought it, and I played the campaign game, uh, which it was okay. I finished yeah, it and yeah. gone, I could have wrote that myself. <laughs> it's really you can so un- it wasn't it, that strong it, no it weren't it was like and you didn't really care for the characters to tell the truth I didn't no. I, there was like oh god you know it was it was yeah. annoying the ships the ships in it were fantastic I must admit the look of it were fantastic the sound of it was fantastic and the ship design was fantastic but the story was just crap <laughs> it was crap <laughs> and they've just done it so it ties into The Last Jedi really do yeah. Right, yeah. there's bits in it, like Luke goes to this this uh, planet to find a secret hideout from Palpatine's with all his his hidden troves of treasure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and, he, and he helps part of the game. You help an Imperial officer that makes him change his mind about wanting to become a rebel. Right. Yeah. So he goes in and he goes, you know, I've still got to destroy all this. And he goes, I'm, and Luke goes, yeah, you can destroy it all, but I just want to you pick this up. And he finds a compass. Now, that mm. compass is hanging in his hut in The Last Jedi. Trouble yeah. is, if you had played the game, and you, as we did, we watched the film, it was like, uh, didn't see it. It was there. It's only when yeah. I've gone back to a screenshot of it, I thought, oh, yeah, it is there. Well, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, God. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, perhaps yeah. I'm just getting old, and I'm not happy with the way Mr. Star Wars is perhaps. playing out. But it's, <laughs> it's getting like that. Oh. But, you know, yeah. it is what it is. It, it, but the look of the game was fantastic, Paul. It is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought, it, it, I thought, mm, yeah, let's get, let's play this game. So I went into the game and I died straight off. This is multiplayer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Then I started, then I died. Then I started, then I died. Then I started, then I died again. And at the end of it goes, you are defeated. And I went, yes, I am. Straight off with it. <laughs> and in went Lego Dimensions. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's the only thing. Like I say, it's it's so hard coming into a game three or four months on. Yeah, um, and you just don't stand a chance when you get in there. Yeah, and it uh, is. If, especially if you're not used to playing like a first person shooter or a you know a Call of Duty esque yeah, style yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you do. You get absolutely. Uh, you come away with a sore backside, shall we yeah, say? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Right. <laughs> that's the news. <laughs> We've tried to go over as quickly as we could with right. a bit of tangent. 
But what we'll do is let's get over and do our in review of The Last Jedi. Right, here we go. Our in review of The Last Jedi. And with us is Jonathan Bell. As you remember, he used to be a host of Radio Free Endor. Jonathan, how are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for getting me on. Now, I know you're in a bit of a, of a move situation, aren't you? Yes, I'm down in Atlanta, much warmer than Ohio. Is it? So. All right. Right then. What we'll do is we'll jump straight into it then, Jonathan. Right. So me and Paul went to the opening night of The Last Jedi. And I know that you have seen The Last Jedi. And I think what we'll do is we'll go with what was good about The Last Jedi. Now, warning, folks. It's spoilers ahead, because if you've not seen it, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing not <laughs> yeah. being it? Not really a fan, really. <laughs> yeah. You know, get yourself, pause it right here. We can wait. Go into The Last Jedi. And when you come back, we'll all add a, add a bit of a coffee and a biscuit, and then we'll kick right on. You've been warned. <laughs> right then, go on then, Jonathan. You can kick us off with what did you find really good about The Last Jedi? All right. Um, so I've seen it. Three times. Um, wow. I saw it opening night. Um, and then I went to a, um, a Last Jedi party on Friday. And then I saw it IMAX 3D on Sunday. Ooh. And then I saw it with my dad. I what? think Christmas Eve. And That's he nice. really enjoyed it. That's good. He, cool. he thought it was great. So it is, I mean, I've been listening to a lot of other um, feedback from different listeners. I mean, different uh, podcasts and such, you know. Mm. Um, but, of course, not as good as Radio Free Endor. Hey, <laughs> look at that. Your check's you in know. the post. So, um, you know, it is just this really, I mean, I agree with a lot of people who are saying it. it's just a lot to take in because there is just so much different about this film. Mm. I mean, just what we learn, I think one of the biggest things is what we learn, just all these different force powers. And, you know, with all the, all the movies, we always get a little more about, you know, different force powers and such. But I feel like this, Ryan Johnson just kind of took it to the next level. And, you know, as a result, we got, you know, floating, we got space flying Leia. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> and Super good, um, yeah. I just thought that something like that was cool. I feel like I really, I, I, I love this kind of conflict that they set up in the trailers mm. with Luke trying to, you know, just just pull pull and tear just this thing of, you know, I trained this kid, Kylo Ren, and it just all went to crap. And yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the visuals were great, um, the humor, um, I mean, I really think, um, I mean, I mean, when my first, I feel like it gets better the second and then the third time, because mm -hmm. the first time it was like, oh my gosh, what did yeah. I just watch? Yeah, yeah and that's, when I went that's, to, what, that's what I thought. Mm. Yeah. And when I went to the um, Last Jedi party uh, the next day they agreed because they had seen it. That was their second at the party. That was the, that was the rogue squadron podcast here in, in the back in up in Columbus, Ohio. And they're like, yeah, after the second time, they enjoyed it a lot more because that was the party. That was their second time. Um, cause I had met, I had been, I meant to see it with them on Friday. Um, but that didn't work out. But anyway, but yeah, so that party was really cool. And I sent you, I know I sent you a little, um, some of those VIP badges. Yes, I did. Um, I've got those VIP badges here, um, Jonathan. And because I, I looked and I thought, World of Beer? <laughs> Sponsored by <laughs> World of Beer? What kind of Jedi party was it? It was a party that I wish I went to. <laughs> yeah, there was a uh, there was a free. I did get there was a free beer, and I tried it. I'm like, okay, this is beer. You know, beer. I'm not big into the alcohol. Yeah, um, but. I, poster they had some art there i could buy it was very tempting you know they had they had battlefront set up they couldn't get the wi-fi to work so they couldn't yeah. go online but, yeah. um, um <laughs> and for me it's just this movie is just a lot to dissect yeah and yeah. It's, it's just so i mean it's the longest star wars movie yet there was yeah. a lot of there was a lot of dialogue wasn't there There was an awful lot of dialogue in this one it had like it's it's slower parts where yeah. 
like I say, there was a lot, there was a lot of dialogue and stuff, yeah. and yeah. There was things to digest. Um, there was a lot of bits that I, I tell you what, I, I I really enjoyed was, do you know that first part where you saw the after the tiles had gone up and you sort of do that zoom past the the, the ships to the rebel base. And then Kerry Fisher's daughter's talking about, come on, let's try to inv- evacuate. And it's like, boom, 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 boom. And the, the first order up here. I just love the way ships and Star Wars come out of hyperdrive. It's so ace. It's like, <laughs> dush. Right? Yeah. And that whole, oh, my God. You know what I mean? They're here. And then that whole section seemed to go so fast. That whole part where with the bombers, you know, where the, um, the rebel bombers go out to destroy a uh, the dreadnought i thought that was proper something out of a world war movie i totally loved the design totally loved how how they looked um but did you notice there's one thing that happened in this film is that the rebels were just failing at every turn they just could not get the upper hand at any mm. point during this film which was good because you could say that's the empire strikes back of the the franchise how you know the empire kicked back and the rebels were hit hard mm. you know the story arc with uh, with ray you know finding you know being drawn to the dark side and then um you know it's, it's really hard for me not to point point out the bad things because i want to bring come on to them yeah yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean but uh, you know the i loved the story loved mm. the story Right, I've loved the effects, loved the music. The music was a proper yeah. callback. The filmography was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, to some of the scenes. Oh God, yeah, and even the the uh, the attacks, the well, the new Sapien attacks, they looked fantastic. They really yeah. did look like gorilla. Don't, don't yeah. they look like? Don't they? It's almost like um, they look like like gorilla. Mm. Yeah. Hands yeah, and it's like, like I'm like, yeah. I mean, are they gonna like be gonna be able to like crawl up walls or something? I don't know. They just just looked like the way he was walking. Like I, I you know? totally it's, think that's what like, they were designed for. But um, yeah. but the way they looked is I, my brain was telling me it was a CGI, but me off and my other brain was saying no, it looks like model work. The way that you know because it's got to fit in with the the way the original attacks you know walked and looked. And I just loved it, um, and I loved the the scene on crate of uh, the Falcon. Wow, that Falcon can smash it's through it. anything. <laughs> it's you know what I mean? It's indestructible. Yeah. But it was just, I loved it, and I loved the part with when Ray went to see Snoke, thinking that she can turn Ben. This there's one thing that this film did for me more than anything, Jonathan. And perhaps you you know you, you know you'll get this sense of feeling this. Before it started, I thought that Kylo Ren was unredeemable. Unredeemable. And then halfway through it, I thought, do you know what? This kid can be redeemed. He can come back and he, he can be a proper Jedi and fight against the First Order. And then it totally switched it again to me thinking, no, God damn it, he can't be redeemed. He's done it now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you yeah. reckon, Jonathan? Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely have some similar feelings as that, as as those. Um, I mean, I feel like that. Um, I think, I mean, I think of possibly dying with a redemption, mm. but I guess that's about the only way I could see him being redeemed is through death, like mm. maybe a sacrifice or something like sacrificing himself for Ray. But I just don't really. I mean, I don't know. In it, he's just raving <laughs> mad. It's like somebody proper didn't give him any milk in his coffer. God damn it! <laughs> I mean, the amount of times I've told him, right? And, and that um, poor Hooks, General Hooks, he's being chucked everywhere. You know, he really did. And you know, and that other thing about with Snoke, I thought, wow, Snoke was proper powerful, and I, and I thought he is a Sith, and then he died. <laughs> They killed mm. him off in one go. It was like, it was awesome. Don't get me wrong, it was proper awesome. And I think, Black, what? And that was the end of his story. And then my mind went, mm. oh, all them, that in those two years, they've been talking about it. Oh, yeah, he's just Snoke. That's what he is, just Snoke. And I thought, yeah, he was just Snoke. That was it. Yeah, yeah, he kind of, it, <laughs> yeah, it just, 
It's, that's it, it isn't it? Yeah. Obscurity. All the, it's like, yeah. I felt sorry for no, all those no the fans. <laughs> They've done all those yeah. theories. Me and you as well, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Done all those theories, spent all that time, and then ah, oh, they were just right mouth. Mm. That was it. It's dead. What did you think to Poe? What did you think to po, to Poe taking on the um, was it a Star Destroyer by himself? Was it a Star Destroyer? Yeah, taking on the th- yeah. Oh yeah, when he went out in in the X wing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that <laughs> yeah, was pretty X-wing. cool. That was pretty cool. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, I just loved it. I, there was, you know, I have proper enjoyed that film. I've watched it about four times now, and um, yeah. I've still got to take my my Nicholas to see it. Uh, but um, I've been sneaking off to see it on my own, right? But um, <laughs> it. I enjoyed it. I really do enjoy mm-hmm. it. It's a great Star Wars film. It's a good action. It is a good action film. Although, like I say, it, it does have moments where it's like very lull in the middle. It's mm. got quite a. Quite, it really has its ups and downs, shall we say? Yeah. So, yeah, it does kind of like with this kind of slow, kind of a car chase. It's almost like a. Heard someone say it's almost like Mad Max. But like a slow motion of like <laughs> of Mad Max Fury Road, which is yeah. you know if you haven't seen it, it's certainly not for the Star Wars you know yeah. kids audience. But it's a pretty intense film, and it's mm. like two hours of one like straight car chase. You know, it's yeah. well, we're, we're, so, gonna, we're gonna slip into what's bad about this film in a minute. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> what's bad about it? And, you know, I don't want to... Well, I'm going to eventually talk about what was bad about this film. But bearing in mind, I do love this film. I will buy it, and I have watched it a couple of times because there is some proper, fantastic moments. It's okay to critique it, yeah, I know okay. it is, yes. <laughs> right? And um, the, you know, like the, the scene with with Luke when he, when he, um, when he fought, well... When we thought he was there fighting Kylo, and that bit where he saw the twin sons, my eyes were welling up. And there's no many oh, times yeah. I actually welled up in this film. You know what I mean? Because mm. I thought, my God, they've done it. They're going to kill off Princess Leia right here. All that, all that footage that we've seen of her standing was just a ruse. They're going to kill her off here, and then they didn't, mm. and then they did, and then they didn't. And I was like, what the yeah. hell? <laughs> Make up yeah. your minds. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. And it's that's the whole how it felt. It was a proper up and down, up and down, up and down with it. You know, kids will enjoy it. You know, this mm. new generation of fans will absolutely lap it up, or will they? Yeah, that's it. Or will I mean, they? I was I wasn't in the best frame of mind when I seen it because obviously I drove up to your house yeah. um, for the midnight viewing, but I'd been up since four o'clock in the morning and mm. I think I had a three or three and a half hour trip up to yours because yeah, the traffic was terrible so by the time I got to, to your house and we, when we went across to the cinema I was I was absolutely shattered so uh, I could really do with seeing it again mm. just to like you know yeah. just watch it properly shall we say well I, um, I think it won't be long until it comes out on uh, on digital release because they're already pre-ordering it you can already pre-order yeah yeah so uh, are we moving on to the negatives now then are we Jamie or uh uh, are we sticking with the pros? Shall we? Or? I can right the negatives. Yeah, you know, you know, shall we go um, on to the negatives of this? Right, this is what I hated about the Last Jedi. Now, mm. the story, the story is oh, it's just awful. <laughs> the story, <laughs> right, was just awful. The bit with the with the Imperial ships, right? Sorry, the First Order ships. They turn up, boom, 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 which I loved, and then yeah. they did this entirely slow car chase <laughs> with all of the first order behind and not one of them went excuse me sir can't we not just warp over there then come back no we can't do short jumps well surely if we just jumped over there and then slowly come back we'll just catch them up quicker no no you can't do that we've all got to stand here we've all got to way back and <laughs> go slow. didn't they not have a load of of tie fighters they could we'll just shoot the tie fighters over there no, no, kill them because they yeah. they did that first of all. That's how the the uh, the cabin got blown out in the first point. They just send a load of tie fighters. No, mm. stay in your bunks. This is going to be a slow one, right? <laughs> and then yes, fair enough. This new technology of uh, hyperspace tracking, which was mentioned in Rogue One, they did mention yeah. it in Rogue One. So we're talking about the 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 uh, technology moving on, which is a Battlestar Galactica thing. <gasps> did they nick yeah. something from Battlestar Galactica? Mm. Yes, they did, <laughs> right? So they sort of did this long, slow trickle. And then Ray goes, no, not Ray, sorry, Finn goes, I know, I'm going to leg it. 
and then he then he finds Rose, which was kind of a coincidence, and they come yeah. up with this fantastic plan about trying to decipher the hyperspace tracking. Bearing in mind the ship's hot, got only enough fuel for one jump, right? So they're going to sneak off to get over to Canto Bright to get the this master coder. You telling me they've got no master coders on board that ship that could do that? <laughs> They've got droids. Surely even R two D two C three PO will have that te- no, te- technical babble. They they could do it. Mm. No, they did it, and then they sort of just went. No one knew they just went. They just went, and even the first order didn't even notice they just left the ship. Or did they? Mm. I can't remember now if they did. But they just let them go. Oh yeah, and then they let them come back. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, it's like <laughs> what is it? A moving hotel? So they did that. So and then they went to Canto Bright. And that's when the film just hit the floor. Boom. And I was thinking, what the hell? This is, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it was slow. I thought we dealt with politics in the prequels, but when they start going on about weapons, yes, we know war is good for people. You know, it's not Star yeah. Trek. It's not the Ferengis dealing weapons <laughs> on both sides, is it? This is Star Wars, right? And then, and then um, DJ turning up with that awful stutter. And then how much... What's in BB-8? What's in him? Because he, he's rolling around with all that money and he, he sounds like he's got nothing in him, right? It's just got you know, no innards. It's all spinning around. Oh, oh, picky now. And then that whole <laughs> Canto Bright bit, they could have cut that and saved 45 minutes. You really could tell where, um, where Ryan Johnson did not like certain characters. Yeah, and then when you get back to uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the ship, the main rebel ship... And, mm. that, you know, Leia and um, Admiral, um, what's her name? Um, she, you know, that whole plan that mm. they had, why didn't she explain that plan to everyone? There was, why not? What, I couldn't not understand why there she was also understand. There was also that part where the code cracker, I can't remember who played the code cracker now. Um, um, uh, Holdo. Holdo. That's it, yeah, Holdo. He, the, he broke out of prison. Like, why is he still there? Oh, DJ, you know? DJ, DJ, no. yeah, yeah. Uh, B- Benicio, Benicio del Toro, isn't it? That's Benicio it. del yeah. Toro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Broke it, out. It's it like, did. why? Why didn't he break out anyway? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like so. in that whole thing. He went over to show him where a giant flux capacitor was. If you notice, it looked like a giant flux capacitor, okay. and and then that whole scene with Phasma, but that Phasma. The ultimate, it was like, oh, she's dead. What? I kept, she, she was like the proper, they, they did say that she would not be the Boba Fett of this trilogy, but she was. She was definitely the Boba Fett. It, it, what, it was, when you hire an actress like Gwendolyn Christie, and then you just don't let her do anything in the first film and kill her off in the second film, what pointless thing. They could have stuck anybody in that armour for that. There was just no need to hire her. For me, Finn should have killed. Well, should have been killed off in this one. The film would have worked when he made that ultimate sacrifice just to be saved. And that whole speeder yeah. thing on crate. What was all that about? They didn't shoot anything. They just sped around for a bit and they went, "Oh, this is crap. These machines are too old." So they legged it back, right? And then no one bothered to shoot them on the way back. They're just dragging them, dragging their sorry asses back into the into the base. Mm. There was so much wrong with this film. It's it was unbelievable. You know what I mean? The story wise just did not go yeah. go right. Um, one of the big things as well, I think, was was like Ray's lineage, lineage. You know, yeah. from you know she had parents just sold her off for drugs or whatever it was, yeah. and it's like, and but but you're as strong as Luke immediately without any training. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's, uh, it, it, it's yeah. like, and the scary thing about it is, right, is that you know the, there was a script in place. And Ryan Johnson chucked it. You now I mean to write his own one. So events that JJ set up, he sort of like just quickly rewrote them. You know what I mean? Um, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a job and a half for JJ now to fix what Ryan's done. Because I bet you that's not how. Um, I think the main thing was it, it the the film actually has raised more questions than what there was before mm. this film. So he's he's got a big job to tie it all together now. Yeah. Uh, people have said that he's got to save this trilogy by tying all these loose ends yeah. back together. I mean, uh, 
I mean, as far as um, Ray's lineage, I mean, Johnson has gone back and said, you know, you know, it's not definite, you know. So, you know, he's oh, kind of so open to open to JJ. May retrofit it as such, yeah. You know, kind of changing things up, you know, it's from a certain mm. point of view or something. Yeah. 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 But it's scary, isn't it, Jonathan, that Disney have got no structure the way this new trilogy is to go. No, like a beginning and an ending. They've got, they're just going, well, the next film's just got to tie in with the first film a little bit and then go ahead, whatever you want it to do. They've got no idea of way, it's like they want it to write itself as it goes along. There's there's no kind of little thread they want to keep because even Mark Hamill has expressed how much he did not like his Luke Skywalker in this film. And he's had to backpedal and and um and uh, uh say that you know his views were his views and he's he didn't really want to you know voice some sort of thing but he did but um it's true that luke skywalker that was in that film was not the luke skywalker that i really wanted you know what i mean it was not yeah, yeah. i did not want to see luke skywalker running around the little island breastfeeding some horrible creature <laughs> Yeah, what was that all was that about? Bit, I know a little bit of sick was in my mouth at that time. Yeah. It was. It was like it's the way he, it's the way he milked it and drank it, looked at Ray and went, mmm. And then she yeah, looked at the milk. creature. Yeah, she looked at the creature, the creature turned around and went, Yeah, he's doing me. I mean <laughs> it's like What? Where where did whose concept thought that was a good thing? I don't know where. It was like, the sort of things I was open to see was that Luke would rise his X-Wing, get in it, and jump back. You know what I mean? And I had to I had to look again, because half of me felt really gutted that he's left um, R2-D2 on, on Atu. On uh, Achu, isn't it? Achu. I thought he left him there. It was only on my second time that I thought, no, he's not there. He's on the Falcon. And because I, I was thinking, what's happening now? What's happening to the Star Wars? R two D two and C three PO are now just cameos in their own films. Yeah, and that's, yeah. are they the next to go? You know what I mean? Because some people, Ken, um, Kevin Smith, you know, Kevin yeah. Smith, he's now um, put out on um, a tweet saying he reckons that the next thing to go will be the Falcon. The Falcon will be destroyed in the next film. And it mm. seems... And there's one thing I didn't want to go into these film is one hero being killed per film. And it mm. it's just Sod's law that Carrie Fisher died and Han Solo is still... Yeah, well, um, Harrison Ford is still alive because then you could have had Harrison Ford back in the next one. You know what mm. I mean? But now, technically, they're all dead. I mean, obviously, Ray's, Ray said that she doesn't want to come back after this third one anyway, so... Yeah. So she she's going to be either snuffed out or written out. Yeah. What do you What do you think? What, what What was the bits that you didn't like, Jonathan? Um. Honestly, I mean, <clears throat> I guess mainly just I mean, most of the stuff. Honestly, most of the stuff you guys have issues with. I um. That I've kind of, I can definitely see, but I, most of them I've kind of settled on. But mm. I guess I guess the main I guess really the issue really for me is just the fact that. Holdo is won't tell him what's going on. I mean, yeah. it's different if it's Why like, didn't she? It would have saved an awful a, lot of problems. It's a feminist edition. It's what we would do. <laughs> <laughs> Not telling the whole thing. But why didn't she tell Poe what was going on? He was sort of like the next in line for command. Um, I mean, I guess, I mean, as far as the Holdo goes, I think she feels like she doesn't have to tell him. But I think when you're down to only a few small number of people, you should m- communicate more. Well, yeah, me. and I think it was a little bit unclear at that one moment where it's like, you know, like between when like Poe was like talking to when he was at that moment where he's like, you know, like if, he's like, are we good? Are we good? Mm. Getting really light up. Wound up with it, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like, so, the voice is like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah. You know, and that, and that, it was that moment where um, DJ was trying to open the door to that room, and DJ's like, 
yeah, we're good. But what was confusing about that scene is that they hadn't even done, they hadn't even like dismantled the thing. Mm. So even if DJ, they still, I mean, Poe wouldn't have been able to, you know, lay a, they were already breaking into the door. Mm. Um, even before Rose was getting in there to disarm or, you know, dismantle the tracking. So that was a little confusing. I'm like, wait a second. Mm. And he's like, we're good. No, no, yeah. not really. No, no, the DJ, we're not good. We have to actually get in there and do the thing. Mm. So it's, and it's then like, Poe can do hyperspace. But it was like, when did when did DJ get chance to make that deal? You know what I mean with the first order? When did he make that deal? You didn't see him off make screen. the deal. Well, it was yeah, it was screen. during that time when they were. Um, it was I guess wasn't because wasn't because uh, Rose and um, Rose and Finn they were knocked out, right? Mm. Oh yeah, I'm, I suppose yeah. I mean, I'm trying to remember. It's it's. I mean, it's it's been. I guess my last time seeing it was like Christmas Eve or something. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to remem- remember, but I guess. I guess, unfortunately, I guess with some of these things, you know, you just it's, it happens off screen, and you know, the time they're in a jail cell or knocked out or something, that's when this happens. You know, I, I mean, how did I mean, how did you know, Ray go from that ship breaking apart to on the Falcon at the gun? You know, yeah, just, yeah. You know, Is so I think. Some of the things are just off screen, and maybe we'll see a deleted scene mm. of some sort. But I guess it's really just that Haldo lack of communication, and I, I understand the criticisms for the Canto bite, and but you know I, I can kind of go with it, and I, and I do like the issue, the thing, the whole. I mean, I think Ryan Johnson, or someone was saying how like this is. There's a lot of gray issues in this movie, and I think, and I did like the issue, the thing of him, you know, good guys, bad guys, and I did like this idea that, uh, you know, in even our own world, you know, an arms dealer isn't necessarily going to be just selling to the quote unquote good guys versus quote unquote bad guys. I do mm. like that idea. So, um, but yeah, I will, will be curious to see. You know what the next one. You know, as far as it be, it would be interesting to see how they tie this all it, up. Yeah, and plus, you know, any any you know tie-in materials down the road, anything to anything the novels or something will explain. Mm. Or believe, you know, I'm just kind of curious about you know even before we get to the final movie. Mm, so. True, true. Mm. Now, now, where do you think the franchise can go from this film? What do you think, Jonathan? Where can it go? So I guess what you mean is like, well, I mean, we have Solo coming up, but I guess you're meeting like after we finish up this trilogy, mm. right? Yes. Um, I mean, I, I guess we have Ryan Johnson's trilogy that he's talking about. Like, yeah. I think he's, he, he's just going to like be your head. He's not going to necessarily direct them all, but I really would be really curious about where we're going with that. I mean, the sky is really the limit. The galaxy is a big place. And, you know, is he going to go back to like, Yoda's time, or he's going to go back to Knights of Old Republic time. You know, I don't. I don't think necessarily. I mean, you know, a adaptation of a previous video game or novel would be mm. interesting. But I'm thinking he has something else in mind, and yeah. you know, it could be, you know, thousands of years before. You know, it could be before Knights of the Old Republic, or it's I don't know something centered on like an underworld. Um, trilogy and then you know maybe in a few years Ray comes back I mean mm-hmm. Daisy Ridley comes back and yeah. you know we have uh, 20 years not Star Wars years I mean like 20 years in our life and she comes back and she's you know a mm. master of Jedi Knight you know that's trying to lead the next generation then, so. yeah true true um, <clears throat> it'd be interesting to see it because um, I, I don't want to see them do a prequel uh, because they can tie themselves into knots with doing prequels um, because a lot of people are going to say well you can't do that because this is and we all believe in canon which Star Trek do not believe in canon but this is Star Wars mm. we believe in canon right so going after going after the force uh, well the, episode 9 I think that's the way to go or run it concurrent with um, this new trilogy 
You know what I mean? That's happening at the same time. That's what I'd like to see. It's a fantastic time to be a Star Wars fan with all this new stuff coming out. And like, I'd like to see where Episode Nine will go. This definitely, JJ has got a serious uh, write on his hands. He's yeah. got to write it and make it make it sense. Because usually he sets everything up and goes, "Ha ha, you now have you've got to do it now." And then they, you know, and Giant Ryan Johnson's gone. Yep. Yeah, this is how I've done it, and now he's got to fix the problem that he originally set up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. It's it's going to be interesting. One thing that it kind of reminds me of is the fact that, you know, with this with this Trek films, like J.J., he wrote and directed the first two, and then, you know, he handed it off for the third one to, um, I guess, Justin Lin, right? Mm, yeah. And I really dug that third one. It didn't do very well, and now Quentin Tarantino is talking about a Star Trek film. <laughs> completely yeah. insane um but i think so and then in this instance is like jj kind of started and then he's going to finish it up um i mean as far as you know for the original trilogy um you know it's arguably whether or not george lucas did the directing for return of the jedi i mean we know urban kersher was complete director for empire but we're not yeah. quite sure about return of the jedi kind of like the uh, steven spielberg issue with uh, poltergeist we're not oh, really yes, sure yes you know yeah right so um basically what we'll do uh jonathan is i think we'll should call it a day there till next time because yeah. i think what we're going to be doing is going to be talking about this uh about this film especially when it comes out on blu-ray as well mm. um because we'll mm. revisit it and you'll be in the comfort of your own else and then we can really nitpick yeah, it look for the scenes. i hope, scenes, can, so I hope next time scene. we can discuss oh sorry yeah, sorry well, jo- you, you can jonathan so I said I was saying I was saying hopefully next time we can like discuss the solo trailer. I know you. Yeah. God, yeah. I was we we're were waiting for that to arrive? We were waiting we, yeah. for that, and then they let us down, like a, <laughs> like a, a pair of old pants. <laughs> I think they'll. I think they'll be on Super Bowl. I think. I think because it's like say it's Fox. Mm. When do you think it's going to be on, Jonathan? Um, I mean, yeah, I definitely here in Super Bowl. Um, but I don't think. Have we has that been, have they premiered it on a Super Bowl before like a first trailer? I think so. There was, there was there was the last year the last Jedi was on was on like a it was a sporting event wasn't it? Yeah, that was shown. yeah, was it was, yeah. But as far yeah, as it was. oh yeah, yeah, I guess it was um that's the, that was the first one. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, it was the last Jedi wasn't it? Was it last Jedi? Or was it no? Sure it was, the last I, I, was it Rogue first, One? Oh no, I guess I meant the first trailer for the Last Jedi, not the first. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it could have been. Yep, yeah, it could have been. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was shown at a. Yeah, because a, a people most, said yeah. that people who didn't like sports had to sit through the sports just to see. Oh the trailer. yeah, was that was that when uh, <laughs> is that that Mark Hamill's like uh, quote is like it's possible. That was like, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, best yeah. watch the, the okay. football. Yeah. Well, uh, will it be interesting to see when this uh, trailer is because there's like that blog that you uh, sent me. Um, uh, Jonathan, um, it says it will be on a Sunday, and it'll either be on um, uh, ESPN or the Fox one. I think the Fox. I mean, surely is. we would see it by like you know, Black Panther comes out, I believe, like February sixteenth or something, yeah. something like that. So I, I mean, I think I mean, it seems crazy that they wouldn't have yeah. that have have a trailer for that before Black Panther. It's, I mean, it's weird how Disney work it because. With Marvel films, they're sticking out trailers, what, nine months before the film comes out. Yet when it comes to Star Wars, they're really pushing it really to the to the Yeah. To the limit. I think it's because you know I mean? they're filming like you say there's still reshoots going on, isn't yeah, there? So yeah. I think it's because they're filming it and, and they're and they're getting it out on the knife edge. And there's there's it's talk all over skin. the internet, of course the internet being the, the truth of everything, that um that Disney think that this solo film is gonna tank. You know what I mean? It's not going to be as successful. But that could be because are they giving us too much Star Wars too quickly? You know what I mean? We don't know. All right. Anyway, Jonathan, we have got to go. And I know you've got to go. So, Jonathan, where can um, our listeners get in contact with you, mate? Um, You can generally, like on Facebook, not Facebook, on on Twitter and Instagram, uh, Jedi Master J Bell. And then I also contribute to the. Radio Free Endor page, um, you know, sometimes posting Star Wars pics, and um, I always, you know, put like a dash Jonathan, so it, so we know it's me and it's not you, Jamie. But that's you right. know, yep, yep. you know, you know, yeah, so that's, that's good, those yeah. are kind of the places. 
Yeah, we're we'll, cool. we'll keeping the fire burning. We're keeping the fire burning, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you guys are doing great. All right, Cheers, thank you very sir. much. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been like, it's our, uh, this is our third year, Paul, isn't it? It's our Just third started year it, yes, yes. Congrats. All right then, Jonathan, thank you again for coming on Radio Free Indoor. It's always a pleasure having thank you on. And uh, we'll speak to you again. Thanks for having me. Cheers, Jonathan. Right then, Paul, that brings us mm-hmm. to the end of the show. Okay, okay. Another one. Another, Another one, one done. What a month it's been. It, and uh, what a conversation. That was brilliant having uh, a conversation with Jonathan. It's great to always have him back on for a chat because I know he's eagerly trying to he's, get back on. Jonathan's a lot more Jonathan's a lot more educated than what I am. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's I'm a bit more educated to me than me as well. And even I'm the I'm older generation. I'm not new. even a Padawan, am I? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting there, boy. You're getting there. With me, you should you should know everything about it now. Being with me, that's for sure. I tell you, but um, it, you know, it's been like I said, the film was. I loved the film. In the end of the day, I did. I yeah. loved it. I might have pulled it down, but I did it's enjoy action, it. I did it's enjoy action it. Film, isn't it. It's just yeah, an action it, film. It, it is. You know, oh, so I've got to see it again because I didn't. I didn't like. I didn't. Uh, Take it all in, shall we say, with with full attention. I think, Paul, so, there'll be plenty of it's opportunities. Quite, it's, it's quite obvious, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, there'll be plenty of opportunities for you to see it again. Right then, so remember, you can show your love for this podcast with an official Radio Free Endor t-shirt available at Tee Public. Also, iTunes is the best place to download it, so while you're there, please leave us a five-star review. Why is nobody leaving us a five-star review? We need some five-star reviews, because <laughs> it'd be nice to get us up higher in the charts and if you listen to this podcast and you love it then share it with some people share it on your instagram on your facebook and on your twitter share the love bring you know show more people about radio free Endo. we want to push it out for this year we want we want to get more views and more subscribers it'd be fantastic um each month i try and put out a, um, a special uh, poster for our for our podcast um, I'm going to see if I can find a, a site that will um, actually make them up as posters. So if you like a particular um, post that I've created for the episode, you can buy it. You know what I mean? You'll be able to get it printed. I'll have to look into that, but that's something. Um, yeah. You can find me on Twitter and on Facebook and uh, sometimes on Instagram. I am at Jamie underscore R underscore Burns. You can find Paul... Yep, I'm on Twitter at Cutterman22, C-U-T-N-R-U-N-22. Yep. And I'm sorry about it. this week, I've got a terrible cold, I'm absolutely full of it. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and the yeah, cold, yeah. Yeah, yeah full of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you can find us, RadioFreeEndor at gmail.com. And we are part of the Southgate Media Network, which have some fantastic podcasts. So get over there and have a look. And we've even got a Patreon um, Southgate Media have got a Patreon mm-hmm. site. I'll try and get the link because you can subscribe with a little bit of a donation. We'll make all these podcasts for free. Mm-hmm. We'll carry on making them for free. Um, so, yeah, that's it, Paul. Job done. <laughs> that's <laughs> job done. So, see you, see you next month, then. Uh, for hopefully a breakdown of the solo trailer. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah, let's hope that. Right, so it's good night from me. Uh, good night from me. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Really? How many was them? Oh, sorry. Let me redo that. Really? How many was it? <laughs> how many was there? Let's yeah. Just say that. Yeah. Really? How many was it? Really? How many what? Just, just say how many was there. Yeah. Just, yeah. Really? Yeah. How many was there? Oh, yeah. <laughs>